Welcome to the GP Llama YouTube channel where if you're totally across all your bike tech news, you may have seen this headline pop up in a few different places across the internet in the last week or so, claiming that Shimano Di2 had been hacked. In short, yes, kind of. Researchers have found that Shimano Di2 wireless systems were susceptible to replay attacks and signal jamming attacks. The latter unlikely to be fixed with a firmware update. Anyhow, Shimano have just released firmwares in reaction to that paper and have used some very interesting wording with their communication around this update. But before getting to that, let's get to the actionables that you need to know. The effective group sets 9200, 8100, 7100, and 820. So 12 speed Durace, Ultegra, 105, and GRX group sets. In short, all the latest Shimano wireless 12 speed groups. There are component firmware updates for the rear derailleur, which is the master for these DI2 systems, and the Levis, which there are two. The firmware versions are there on screen, and Shimano have provided details on how to install these updates. Now I'm hoping in the very near future those processes can be followed because at this point in time their update process doesn't work at all. In fact it's a complete mess which I only assume is a result of them trying to get these updates out with their self-imposed deadline of late August. In summary the update process you'll need to follow would be to update your rear derailleur with the eTube mobile app which doesn't currently work for this update, we'll dig into why in just a few moments. However your wireless shifters will need to be connected to a wire to get them updated. That wire either connecting your shifters to your DI2 system down the back of the bike or to the PC Link device, which here in Australia goes for 250 bucks and has to connect to Windows systems only because there's still no Mac YouTube client. Now I have a whole video on how to update wireless levers for Shimano systems. I'll link to that in the video description below. And with that, that concludes the what you need to know part of this video. And I hope it's been informative. Now onto the process that I had to go through today to get my Altegra 8100 series DI2 system updated to this latest secure firmware. Now a disclaimer, this isn't a how-to as such because the process will change when they do fix the fix. But let's dig into what it took to get my bike updated today. Okay, with the bike on the stand, I press the rear master button and wait for it to flash blue. Okay, it's ready to connect to the eTube app. I pull out the phone, wait a few seconds and it connects through. On the update tab, there were no updates for the rear derailleur. So that was kind of strange. Now checking the levers right first, press the button on the right. It then says there is an update for the right lever. Okay, that's what we're expecting on the left. Also what we're expecting, but no update for the rear derailleur until we click on the icon of the rear derailleur. And then it does, I captured that for future reference. It does say there's an update available, but we can't install it though, even though the date of August 30 is there on screen. Okay, with no luck using this, it was then over to the eTube software on Windows with the PC Link device. Okay, PC Link device plugged into my Windows machine and the DI2 wire straight into the rear derailleur. Now there was no updates for the front derailleur or battery, so I could update the rear derailleur direct. Okay, after manually updating the eTube app to 5.33, we load that, we click on next to connect to the component. That just takes a few seconds. That was actually 25 seconds, but I have sped it up for the video. And once connected to the rear derailleur with that single cable, it will also want to connect to the wireless levers. So pressing a button on the left, pressing a button on the right, it can check those as well. It won't be able to update them because they're not wired in. However, I thought that was quite interesting. Okay, over to check for the firmware on the rear derailleur and there's no update. 4.2.0 is the latest version. That's not quite right. So it knows there's firmware for the levers, but there's no firmware available for the rear derailleur. The website for Shimano tells us there is. The YouTube mobile app tells us there is. This is the process to follow and it wasn't working. Now, here's where the hero of the day comes in. Terry over at Better Shifting posted some guidance, I guess, in some inner workings of the eTube app and where it drops the firmwares on the system. So just pulling up the firmwares downloaded with the eTube app when it first starts, we can see the RDR 7150 423 has been delivered for the rear derailleur of the 105 system and GRX, I believe. The shifter update has been delivered. That is the Durace number on there, but it is a shared binary with the Altegra levers as well. But from what we could tell, there was no delivery of the shared binary used by both Altegra and Durace for 423, which would be the RDR 9150 423.dat. 
Now, again, with the power of the internet and guessing a few URLs, the missing binary was found and manually downloaded. Dragging it and dropping it into the firmware directory, I also had to rename this for it to work. So just renaming the file here, RDR 9250, removing that dash D. And again, this is the shared binary for both Altegra and Durace. And with that file now in place, it was back over to the eTube Professional version 5.33. And again, connecting this straight through to the reader railer. And the firmware update is now available because the binary is now sitting on the Windows system. Okay, clicking on OK, update to enter on that. It will complete the process. Now the levers will have to be updated each manually by wiring them in. We'll cover that in just a moment once that succeeds. Okay, update finished, and that's happy. Four, two, three, installed on the rear derailleur. What a rabbit hole that took. And from there, updating both levers by wiring them into the system, one after the other and completing this 4.2.2 update on both the right and the left levers. And there we have it, job done. Now the final check that I performed with this, with the bike back on the workbench there, loading the eTube app and just checking that all the firmware updates were acknowledged within the eTube mobile app, left and right levers both updated, rear derailleur updated, we're done. Okay, and there we are. The updates on the eTube website are now installed on my bike. I can confirm just updating the rear derailleur doesn't break anything. Just updating the rear derailleur and one lever doesn't break anything. Everything still works. And again, just updating everything, it all still works, which is a good thing. Now, can I confirm this update does anything at all? No, no, I can't. Now to dissect this mess just a little bit more and have a look at the communications around this update. And firstly, this replay vulnerability is by design. Shimano knew. They had plenty of time to fix this. In the last two years that this group set has been publicly available, or even prior to that, before rolling it out to the public, they've only chosen to patch this as a reaction to the published paper and coverage in high-profile media websites. It's good to see them move on this. They've kind of stumbled with that uh, firmware seeding with their app. They'll fix that, I'm sure. But it uh, is a concern that it's always been there. However, onto the wording, and the wording that Shimano have used with this patch, or security patch, isn't consistent with any firmware update leading to system security that I have ever seen. Starting off with, we have updated the firmware for your DI2 system to make it more comfortable and reliable to use. Comfortable? I can only assume what they were aiming for with that wording is it gives you more confidence to continue using DI2 with these updates in place. The next quote from Shimano allows me to step it up a notch in regard to a rant on this one. They say, if it is difficult for you to perform the updates on your own, please contact our distributor or the place where you purchased your DI2 system. Shimano have made this update process difficult by design. They knew they even include it in here because they do know it's a complete pain in the ass to update their firmwares. The fact you've got to do the wireless shifters with a wire or a $250 device and only on Windows, they've made it an end user problem and it shouldn't be an end user problem. You should be able to pop open the app, do your updates and be confident with the technology that you've purchased. It's not the case. Now I was thinking about this today. Yes, the firmware only has just landed, but if I had a $20,000 Pinarello with the latest DI2 on it and I've walked into a bike store today and I said, I'm not leaving this store until the latest published firmware is installed on this bike, I wouldn't expect any bike store anywhere to be able to follow the process or the hack that you've seen here today to get that published firmware installed. This stumble with a firmware rollout they've done, as you've seen today, is inexcusable. It's embarrassing, but I can guarantee you they'll remain silent on it, they'll fix it, and everything will be fine. And most concerning of all, <laughs> right at the end, even if you do not apply the updates, you can keep using your DI2 system without any issues. Without any issues is a false and misleading statement. They need to pull that down from their website immediately. The fact they've released this firmware, I'm even talking about this today, is proof you may possibly have issues if you don't patch. So Shimano, hot tip, take that off your website. That is double embarrassing. And it allows me to get on my high horse. Anyway, also of note, this update has not been independently verified. We don't know if it works. We have to take their word for it and hope someone doesn't do a replay attack. 
And lastly today, to address the inevitable comments of, this doesn't matter, who cares, this is a non-issue. Now with my background in security, my bias is towards more secure systems. So to me, yes, it does matter. With Shimano releasing these updates so soon, to them, yes, it also matters. They've released this patch in record time. Now to use an analogy, does your home have a front door with a lock? Yes. Are you likely to be the victim of a home invasion? Probably not. But do you lock your door? Of course you do. And now this vulnerability is in the public domain, people know about it, the hardware to execute this is relatively cheap, it's best you get these updates installed. Because you very well know, the first question Shimano support are going to ask if you have trouble with your DI2 system is, are you on the latest firmware? And hopefully with this video and this information, you already are. All right, with that, thanks for watching. As always, if you found this informative, give it a thumbs up, hit like to subscribe to be across more videos on this channel, and we shall see you soon.